Hi, this is video three in the playlist where we've been looking at the AQA Foundation Paper 2. Um, if you want to have a go at the questions on this paper, please do follow the link below in the description and that'll take you through to the website where you'll be able to download a copy. Please do have a go at each of the questions, stop and start the video and work your way through. Uh, we finished in the previous video on question 20, we're going to start here with question number 21. Okay, so Question number 21 deals with uh, something called a square-based pyramid and it actually gives you the um, formula that you need to use to be able to work out. And it says work out the volume. Okay, well the first thing is if work out the volume we need to know the area of the base and the perpendicular height. Well the perpendicular height we've been given which is 17.4 and the area of the base is going to be 12.9 along here. Now because it's square we're going to multiply it also by 12.9. So we can actually write this out as one long calculation, bearing in mind it is a calculator paper, um, so you should be able to just put this straight into the calculator, is one third times 12.9 times 12.9, which is the area of the square base, okay? And then the perpendicular height you're given as 17.4. So pop that in your calculator and you should come out with 965.178. Now it's not actually asked you for any kind of decimal places or significant figures or anything like that. So you can either leave it at that if you want to, or you can say it's going to be 965.18 centimetres cubed and that's to 2dp. Okay, hope that's all right for you. Let's move on then to question number 22, which deals with um, working out numbers in completing a Venn diagram. Okay, uh, these are becoming a bit more popular as uh, time is moving on, and I'm starting to see these a lot more in papers. So again, it's worthwhile do practicing a little bit of time with Venn diagrams. And it says that all we need to do is complete it where we've got square numbers in here and even numbers in here. So the easiest way is just kind of work through the list. So if I've got one, well, one is actually a square number, but it's not an even number. Uh, two is an even number, but it's not square. OK, so I've got rid of that and I've got rid of that. Let's look at three. Well, three is neither square nor even, so it's going to go out. OK, four is actually a square number and it's an even number, so it's going to go in the middle there. OK, five is neither one nor the other. OK, so I've done three, four and five. And do mark these off as you're doing them because otherwise you might lose a bit of track. OK, so six is an even number. Seven is neither here nor there. Eight is going to be in the even number camp. So I've got six, seven and eight. OK, nine. Well, 9 is a square number, but it's not an even number, so it's going to go into here. 10 is an even number, okay. 11 is not square and not even, so that's going to sit outside. And 12 is an even number, okay, but it's not square, so that'll deal with 9, 10, 11, and 12, okay. So that's the Venn diagram for you, and then it says one of the numbers is chosen at random, write down. Right, the probability that it's square and even. This little symbol means and, so square and even, which is number four. Now remember, it's four, it's one number, so one number out of 12 numbers in total, so 12 in total. OK, so remember that this when you when you read fractions, it's out of it's one number out of 12 numbers. The probability of it being square and even, it happens to be the number four, but that's just one number out of the, the bank of 12 numbers that you're actually working with. OK, so let's have a look then at a little bit more. I think this is also uh, probability as well. Slightly different because this time we've got a uh, grid of information to deal with. OK, 
So a coin is rolled onto a grid of squares. It lands randomly to win. The coin, the coin must land completely within one of the squares. Okay. Mira and John each roll a coin a number of times and record their results. Okay. So work out two different estimates for the probability of winning. Well, let's have a look at Mira. So what does Mira do? Well, Mira, she wins six rolls out of, now be careful here because she's actually rolled all together 6 plus 44 which is 50 times. So her probability of winning is 6 out of 50. Okay, then look at John. Now don't feel tempted also with these to reduce the fraction and cancel it down. You really don't need to. It's kind of, it's a bit more meaningful to leave it as you've written it. So in John's case he's won 28 but he's actually rolled a hundred times. So another estimation of probability of winning would be 28 out of 100 for John. Okay, and then it says, which of your estimates is a better estimate for the probability of winning? Well, it's, it's better to use this one, mainly because John's rolled twice as often as Mira has. So actually, the, the better one would be 28 out of 100, and that's because there is um, a larger sample. Okay, so 100 numbers, 100 rolls he's actually uh, rolled, and he's won 28 out of those, those 100. Okay, let's have a look then at question number 24. And uh, question 24, um, it says, in a sale, the original price of a bag was reduced by one fifth. Okay, so what it means is, is the sale price, which is £29.40, is equal to 80%. So one fifth is the same as 20%. Okay, so therefore it's actually equal to 80% of the normal price. OK, now in order to uh, do this, I need to write rather than 80 percent, I'd write it as a decimal. OK, and rather than writing normal, I'm just going to write N. OK, so using a little bit of manipulation here, I've got £29.40 equals 0 0.8 of N. So if I want to work out N, I just simply divide through by 0 0.8. So if I divide through by 0 0.8, I get my normal price of £36.75 equals normal. So that's going to be 36.75. OK, there are some videos, there's certainly a video on reverse percentages, so it's well worthwhile having a look at those videos. Um, again, I keep saying this, but this particular type of question is fairly popular. It does come up. Okay, which of these is not used to prove, not used to prove that triangles are congruent? So it's that word again, congruency. We had it at the beginning of the paper. Just basically means the triangles are the same. Okay, well, it's area, it's angle, angle, and angle. The reason being is that you could have, let's say, a triangle like that, okay, which has three angles in it. Well, the angles could be exactly the same, but the triangle could be bigger. OK, so it's not proving that the triangles are the same. It's just proving that they've got the same angles. OK, hope that's all right for you. Let's move on then to question number 26. Uh, question number 26, we're being asked to work out the length DE. OK, so uh, this is where you've got just a little bit of work to do now. Um, it's, it's, it's kind of... Um, one of those questions where unless it kind of occurs to you right at the very beginning that this is actually really, if you're going to work out this angle, uh, this length here, it's actually a Pythagoras question, okay? So what we've got is a right angle triangle where if we've got these two measurements, we can work out this one, okay? Now, if we look at the actual diagram itself, it tells us that E is the centre of rectangle um, a, D, C, B. So it's the census. So that means this length here must be 6. Okay. It also means then that this length along here must also then be half of the overall length, so it must be 10. Okay. So what we've got then is a Pythagoras problem. So if I just put that into here, I've got then 6. And I've got 10, okay? Now, you might kind of do it slightly different to me. 
I would write de squared equals 6 squared plus 10 squared. So that's 36 plus 100. OK, so de is going to be the square root of 136. OK, now if I pop that into my calculator, that's going to give me 11.662. OK, and that's perfectly fine if I write that as the answer and that's to 3dp. You might choose to do it just to 1dp, in which case it'd be 11.7. And that's perfectly fine. So on the surface, this wasn't a Pythagoras question, but Pythagoras does come up um, a lot in these types of papers. So uh, be on the lookout for Pythagoras, particularly if you can spot a right angle triangle, you'll see that it will come up um, fairly frequently. Okay. Question number 27, um, circle the equation of a line that is parallel to y equals 5x minus 2. Well, parallel basically means that the value of this here, which is the gradient, is the same. So with parallel lines, in this particular case, what we've got is a line that actually looks like that, where that's minus 2, and this is a gradient of 5. So the only other line that's got the same gradient is this one here, because that also has a gradient of 5, but in this particular case, it crosses the y-axis at positive 2. OK, that's that positive 2 here. So to answer that question, it would actually be this particular line here. OK, so let's move on then to question number 28. And it says, we've got in a school, we've got number of boys, the number of girls is 9 to 7. OK, um, ratio questions, I think again, at the beginning of this um, particular uh, playlist, we've done some another question on ratio right at the very beginning of the paper. Um, so we've got boys and we've got girls, and we've got 9 to 7, OK? So what we're saying, really, is that if there were 16 children in the school, 9 of them would be boys, and 7 of them were girls, OK? And the difference between boys and girls would be 2. There would be 2 more boys than there would be girls. However, according to the question, there are actually 116 more boys than girls. So in other words, I've got to multiply that by 58, and that will then give me 116, OK? Well, if that is the case, I've got to multiply everything else by 58 as well. So times 58, OK? So if I multiply 9 times 58, I'm going to get uh, 522 boys. And if I multiply 7 by 58, I'm going to get... Um, 7 by 58 is going to give me 406. 406 girls, OK? So in other words, um, if I want to work out the number of the total number of students in the school, I've got 522 boys and 406 girls, and the difference between the two is going to be 116. So if I add those two together, it means I'm going to get 928 students in the school altogether. So the answer to my particular question is 928. And like a lot of these ratio questions, you've got to find something that you've then made bigger. OK, so I, I can't quite remember what the last question on ratio was, but if you go back onto the, uh, I think the first video, there is a question there where we did a very similar technique to be able to solve this sort of question. OK, question number 29. Um, it says circle the equation with roots of 4 and minus 8. All right. Um, again, this is one of those questions where you, you sort of need to know it really. But what they're talking about is that these are... Um, equations, quadratic equations, and what we've got here is we've got, in this particular case, I've got a root of 4 and a root of minus 8, so it's actually that one there, okay? Um, it, it would take too long on this particular video to show you how that works, but um, if you follow similar playlists on things like quadratic equations, that will give you a lot more information 
on that type of question. OK, let's have a look then at the final question on the paper, which is uh, working with trapeziums. OK, now um, I have actually done this question before on one of the other um, papers that we've looked at. I think it was probably also AQA, I'm not quite sure, but I'll follow uh, a similar sort of pattern as I did before. And the first thing I would do is um, rather than draw it this way around, I'm actually going to I'm not going to cheat a little bit, but I'm going to just make it a bit easier for me and I'm going to draw it that way around. So they deliberately flipped this and all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it back the other way around. OK, because it makes it a little bit easier for me to see. OK, so what we're saying is, is that this is four and this is ten. So in other words, the scale factor, the amount of times I've multiplied this four by to get to 10, the scale factor is equal to 2.5 because 2.5 times 4 is going to be 10. All right. Now I can then apply that with all the other measurements. So I know this overall measurement is 25, which is this one here, which is this. And then the measurement of this little bit here, which is the same as this, is going to be 10 because 25 divided by 2.5 means that this will be 10. OK, and then finally, I'll also need the measurement of um, this bit along here, which is this bit here. Now, I know this is 18 and 18 divided by 2.5 means this would be 7.2 or this would be 7.2 and this would be 18. So I've got all my component parts now that I need to be able to work out the um, shaded area. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to work out the area of the large trapezium and then I'm going to take away the area of the small trapezium and hopefully I'm going to get an answer of 294 centimeters squared. Okay so um, the formula for working out the area of a trapezium, um, I'm not entirely sure whether these are going to show up on exam papers, I think they are but you need to be aware so the area of a trapezium is equal to a half A plus B times H. OK, so A is going to be, if I'm looking at the big one here, is this 18, B is 10, and H is going to be 25, the vertical height. OK, so let's just plug those numbers in. So the large one is going to be equal to a half. A is going to be 18. B is going to be 10 and H is going to be 25. And if I put that in my calculator, I'm going to get an area of the large trapezium of 350 centimetres squared. I then look at the small. And again, I'm going to use exactly the same formula. I got a half, but this time, if we go to what I've, I worked out, I've got 7.2 and that's going to be plus... Eight, uh, big bond plus four, so 7.2 plus four, and then the height is 10. So if I pop that into my ca uh, calculator, I've got 7.2 plus four, multiplied by a vertical height of 10, and that's going to give me 56. OK, so to work out the area then of the shaded shape, the area is going to be um, large minus small, and that's going to be 350 minus 56, which equals 208, uh, 200, pardon, 294 centimetres squared, which is what they've asked us to show. OK, I uh, hope that's all right for you. I have followed uh, the same question, as, as I believe, in one of the other videos. I'm not quite sure which one it is, um, but it's the same pattern each time. The thing that I think you need to remember is, firstly, the area of the trapezium formula, um, and also just draw the diagram sometimes to suit yourself. If you want to flip it the other way around, then go right ahead and do that because otherwise it can get a little bit confusing. OK, I hope that's all right for you. Please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. Um, please subscribe to the channel. There's going to be lots more videos of a very similar sort of nature. Please do follow each of the, um, the exam specimen papers through and see how you get on and compare your answers. I hope it's useful. Um, I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.